Have you ever looked at the moon and wonder where all those craters came from? While many of them are billions of years old, they haven't been there forever. Let's take a closer look at how craters form and then try making some of our own. Craters are marks left behind by collisions from space rocks called meteors. When a meteor hits the surface of a moon or planet, the energy of the impact can melt or vaporize the meteor itself and the surface rocks are blasted away, leaving behind a circular crater shape. On Earth, our planet's thick atmosphere causes most meteors to lose their speed and burn up or break apart before they hit the surface. Since the moon has such a thin atmosphere, meteors hit more often and at higher speeds, leaving behind the many craters found on the moon's surface today. Today, we're going to use a model to represent a meteor crash onto a planet's surface and carry out an investigation on how meteor speed and size changes craters. To do this, you'll need a pan, pie tin, or shallow dish, about two cups of flour, a quarter cup of cocoa powder, small rocks or marbles of various sizes to represent meteors. These shouldn't be more than one and a half inches. A meter stick, some newspaper or tarp to cover the ground or table if you're doing this indoors, and a science notebook or paper, and something to write with. To start our investigation, we need to define our independent variables, or factors we will be changing. We have two independent variables for this experiment. The first is meteor width or diameter, which will help us understand how meteor size affects craters. The second is drop height, which will help us understand how meteor speed affects craters. A higher drop height equals a faster speed. A lower drop height equals a slower speed. To keep track of these variables, you're going to make a table in your science notebook. First, add four rows to your table, labeled marble 1, marble 2, marble 3, and marble 4. Next, add three columns labeled marble diameter, 30 centimeter drop, and 60 centimeter drop. Measure the diameter of each of your four rocks or marbles in centimeters at the widest point. The smallest marble will be recorded as marble number 1, then the next smallest is marble 2, and so on. Record these measurements in the marble diameter column of your table. Pause here to create your table and add your marble diameter measurements. Now let's set up our model of the planetary surface. Fill your pan with about two inches of flour. Level it off to make a smooth surface. Sprinkle a fine layer of cocoa, just enough to cover the flour. Pause the video here to create your planetary surface. It's finally time to run our tests. Hold the meter stick inside the edge of the pan. Drop one of your marbles into the pan from a 30 centimeter height. Carefully remove the marble without changing the shape of the crater it leaves behind. Measure the diameter of the crater and record the measurement in your science notebook under the 30 centimeter height column for the marble one row. Write or draw any observations about the crater in your science notebook. Repeat this for each of your four marbles. How do you think the different meteor sizes are going to affect the size of the impact crater left behind? Pause the video now and come back once you've measured and recorded the diameters of the craters left behind by all four marbles at the 30 centimeter drop height. Welcome back! It's time to set up our next tests. Smooth out the craters and add more cocoa to any spots that are missing some. Now you're going to test how meteor speed affects craters by changing our second variable, drop height. Drop each of your marbles from the 60 centimeter height. The higher drop will give them more time to speed up. Once again, record the diameters of the craters and any observations you make about them. How do you think the drop height is going to affect the size of the impact craters? Pause the video now and return when you've recorded the crater diameters for all four marbles at the 60 centimeter drop height. Once you're done, look at your data to compare. What factors led to the largest impact crater? What factors led to the smallest impact crater? Can you tell which factor made the biggest difference to the size of the craters? Was it the height of the drop or the size of the marble? Think about how you could continue this investigation to learn more. For example, you could graph your results to see trends in the data, 
test additional marble sizes and drop heights, test what happens when craters overlap, or when a meteor comes in from an angle instead of dropping straight down. What other investigations could you create? Have fun experimenting, and for more activities like this one, check out PackSci.org. Stay curious, everyone.